Hey people, it's me again, answering all your fun questions like what mistakes should you avoid when you're selling your home? All right, listen, I know selling a home is a huge undertaking. It's really stressful between the prep work and the showings and the repairs and the contracts and disclosures and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. So if you're willing to learn from other people's mistakes and willing to listen to me because I've been doing this for a little while, I'm gonna help you avoid some of the biggest mistakes you can make. Now, the first thing you wanna think about is, are you waiting for a better time to sell? Everybody thinks springtime is selling season, but that doesn't mean that you should sit around and wait for months to sell your house because it's not gonna be spring for a while. Homes get sold every single month of the year. People either want to or have to move no matter what the calendar says. So if you're ready to sell, but you don't think it's the right time of the year, think again, because there's buyers out there looking for a home like yours all year long. I promise it happens. Houses sell on Christmas. <laughs> the second thing you really need to avoid is pricing your home too high. Now, of course, we want to sell your house for the most possible amount of money. Duh, right? But overpricing your home is really going to have the exact opposite effect. The longer your house sits on the market because it's overpriced, the more value it loses. Anybody who sees it sitting there is going to want to know what is wrong with it. Why hasn't it sold? And if they even bother to come and see it at all and they decide that they like it, they're going to ask you for a big fat discount. So price it right from the beginning. You're going to end up reducing the price later. You're not going to get what you're looking for. You really want to take advantage of that peak period in the beginning when your house is newly listed. If it's overpriced, it doesn't happen. Okay? The third mistake you need to avoid is skipping the prep work. Always do the prep work. You need an agent who's gonna help you get your home staged the, so that you have all of your marketing in place and it looks great for your photos. Your photos are the most important part and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this later. Now staging doesn't mean that you remove all your stuff and you replace it with a page from the Pottery Barn catalog. No, that's not it. I'm talking about a professional who can come in your home and use the things that you already own, arrange them in a way that gives it a fresh appearance, lots of light, more space, and gets it all ready for those pictures. So when a realtor or stager stop, talks about removing furniture, tchotchkes, cleaning the windows, decluttering, painting, remember all of these things are in your best interest and they're all things that are gonna bring more bucks into your pocket when you do sell, okay? The fourth thing you need to avoid, do not ignore any major repairs. No one wants to spend a chunk of money up front, I totally get it, but it's gonna have a big impact on what your house sells for. So when it comes to the big repairs or even the little repairs, not doing them is a huge mistake. Let's say a buyer comes in and sees a water spot on your ceiling, right? And they say, well, I wonder what that water spot is, what's going on there? And your answer is, oh, we need a new roof because the roof leaks what are they gonna think? They're gonna walk around thinking, what else is wrong with this house? What are they hiding in the dark closet? Or, you know, what's wrong? And they immediately start thinking of as a fixer and start deducting costs for the repairs that may or may not have to be done. So, you know, use, wouldn't you rather say, we had a roof leak, we fixed the roof, we put a new roof on, whatever it is, the roof is good for 10, 20, 30 more years, um, and you're good to go. Better yet, just replace the roof to begin with, paint the ceiling, and don't let them see that that what repair was done. You can tell them they have a new roof. We'll advertise that, okay? The fifth thing, this is a pet peeve. Please do not cheap out on your photos. Professional photography is the most important piece of your marketing. It's gonna be on your websites, your social media ads, your postcards, your email campaigns, your brochures, everything that advertises your property. There is no way around a professional photographer. It's an absolute must. Now, a pro is gonna pick the best angles, get the best lighting, showcase all the best qualities of your home. They'll be able to get a picture of that tight little bathroom <laughs> under the stairs, you know, that tiny one. And they'll be able to do it without their reflection being in the mirror. And I don't know if you've ever tried that. I have, it's pretty much impossible. I don't know how they do it. Okay, professional photography. All right, number six, please make your home available for showings, okay? This seems like common sense, but you would be surprised how many people are just too busy to show their homes. You can't sell it if you don't show it. So the tip here is keep it ready to show pretty much all the time. I know you have to live there, at least keep it close. 
Um, we'll try to get you as much notice before the showings, but sometimes you can't get that. And if somebody wants to come in and see your house, you say yes. If they ask, you open the door, okay? All right, number seven, don't hide the problems that you do have. Now, there's not a lot to say on this. Just don't do it. You don't wanna lie. You don't wanna get into, tr into trouble. You're gonna have to complete disclosures. Lying is only gonna get you sued. So please, just be transparent, okay? Number eight, refusing to negotiate. This is one of the biggest mistakes that sellers make because they let their emotions get in the way. If you have an offer that is not exactly what you've been hoping for, don't just walk away, negotiate. Of course you think your price is more than fair on the list, on the listing price, but sometimes the only way to sell successfully is to compromise. That goes for both you and the buyer. Now, usually your first offer is the best, so if you're thinking something better is gonna come along, there's a good chance you're wrong, okay? Now, these are all really important things that you need to know when you're getting ready to sell your house or when you're actually in the process. But of course, there's a lot more that goes into it, more than I can tell you in five minutes. So if you have questions, give me a call or better yet, invite me over and let me take a look around and tell you about how I can help you, okay? You know how to find me. I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.